Good morning to all of you. A very warm welcome to our third quarter and nine months earnings call for the financial year FI24. I all of you are doing well and safe and healthy. And in today's call, I have with me Mr. Padmanabhan, our CFO, Sandra Mowgli, our investor relationship, uh, so, so Dinesh, our strategy planning head. <clears throat> we'll begin this call with providing an overview of the company's performance and nine months, and then open for your questions. Before I start sharing the business performance, I am happy to share with you the news of Kumi as the best managed company in 2023 in India by Deloitte. They are running this program worldwide in and around 45 countries. Deloitte started this program in India three years back. This is an acknowledgement of good work done by Team Kumi for many decades. I am very happy to share this uh, achievement by I'll now start with the consolidated financial results. Consolidated sales for nine months of FI24 were 3,445 crores, at about 0.8%. Uh, could I request, uh, you know, there's a hissing sound coming. Uh, uh, can you take the headphone off, please? Growing at 0.8%. Thank you. 0.8% contributed by ceramics, growing at 4.4%, abrasives growing at 3.2%, and electro minerals with a negative growth of 5.2%. Consolidated sales for Q3 FI24 were at 1,130 crores, with a sequential growth of 0.6% and a degrowth of 3.2% quarter over quarter. Growth in Q3 FI24 over Q3 FI23 was contributed by 3.1% growth in abrasives, degrowth of 7.9% in ceramics, and a degrowth of 10.6% in electro minerals. Q3 FI24 performance compared to Q2 FI24 was 0.6%, mainly contributed by ceramic segment degrown at 8.1%. It is important to bring the perspective of VAW here. VAW, our Russian subsidy on YTD basis, represents 20% of the consolidated Kumi. VAW grew 25% in nine months in ruble terms. However, when translated in INR, there's a degrowth of 9%. During the last year, on YTD basis, ruble was converted into INR at 1.27, and in FI24, on YTD basis, ruble is converted into INR at 0.92. Had the exchange rate remained the same, the overall growth of QME on YTD basis would have been 8% instead of 0.8%. We'll discuss this in detail later. PBIT for YTD FI24 is at 453.8 crores with a PBIT margin of 13.2% compared to PBIT of YTD FI23, which was at 383.8 crores at a PBIT margin of 11.2%. This is a growth of 18.2%. This was contributed by abrasive growth, growing at 77.8%, ceramic growing at 13.6%, electro minerals with a degrowth of 11.7%. PVAT for Q3 FI24 was at 157.9 crores, with a PVAT margin of 14%. Compared to PVAT for Q3 FI23, which was at 147.7 crores, with a PBAT margin of 12.6%. This represents a growth of 11.7% sequentially and 6.9% quarter over quarter. 
profit after tax on YTD basis for FI24 was at 326.4 crores, growing at a 7.9%, and profit after tax for Q3, FI24 was at rupees 111.3 crores, growing at 9.2%. Uh, sequentially and 2% compared to Q3 FI23. Now I'll go <clears throat> standalone and then by segment. Standalone grew by 5% to 1,937 crores in nine months of FI24 compared to last year. The growth was majorly driven by electro minerals at 7.2%, Ceramic segment at 6%, the abrasive segment at 3.8%. The growth in Q3 FI24 compared to Q3 FI23 is almost flat at 635 crores, and compared to Q3 FI24, there was a degrowth of 1.4%. PVIT on YTD basis was rupees 343 crores with a PBAT margin of 17.77%, which grew at 14.2% compared to PBAT of last year at rupees 300 crores, with a PBAT margin of 16.3%. The growth in PBAT margin came from abrasives, which grew at 31.7%, ceramics, which grew at 10.3%, and a fall from electron minerals by 29.7%. Q3 FI24 PBIT was rupees 110.2 crores, PBIT margin of 17.4%, which grew at 7.3% compared to Q3 FI23, and sequentially there was a degrowth of 0.4%. Profit after tax on YTD basis was 256.1 crores. This is an increase of 18.1% compared to FI23. Profit after tax for Q3 FI24 was at 80.15 crores, resulting in a 10.9% growth compared to Q3 FI23 and 3.2% degrowth compared to Q2 FI24. I'll now move on to segments. <coughs> Abrasives. Abrasives consolidated revenue on YTD basis was 1,558 crores growing at 3.2% compared to last year. If was impact is considered, the growth should have been at 5.8%. Abrasives consolidated revenue for the quarter grew 3.6% sequentially to 529 crores and 3.1% quarter over quarter. On YTD basis, standalone abrasives was 858 crores and grew by 3.8% compared to last year. Standard on abrasives grew by 3.2% to 291 crores quarter over quarter and 1.9% sequentially. VAW on abrasive segment. On YTD basis, sales grew by 24% in ruble terms. However, in INR, this resulted in a decrease of 9%. During the nine months, FI23, the ruble was converted at 1.27 last year, and this year is getting converted at 0.92. Rodius. Rodius in Q3 achieved a net sales of 15.5 million euro, compared to 14.9 million euro in Q3 of I23, and 15.2 million euro in Q2 of the current year. On YTD basis, the sales G grew by 2% to 46.2 million from 47.2 million during the last year. Due to softening of the demands in parts of the Europe, there was a drop in volume to an extent of 8%, while the mix and price enabled a 6% gain, resulting in a net drop of 2%. On YTD basis, the loss after tax at 2.1 million against the loss of 3.4 million during the last year. This means losses are coming down. We told earlier during the, our last earnings call that at full year basis, a similar loss as that of the last year is what we expect. 
However, considering the better performance in Q3 and the positive outlook for Q4, we may lower the losses than earlier expected. The interesting point to note here is that if we exclude the PPA write-off of 2.1 million on YTD basis, Rodius was close to break even operationally. Avuko, coming to Avuko's performance this quarter, we achieved 2.3 million sales against 1.9 million in Q2 of the current year and 2.2 million in Q3 of the last year. Last after tax in Q3 was 0.27 million against the loss of 1.36 million in Q3 of FI 23 and 0.86 million in Q2 of the current year. On YTD basis, we achieved 6.6 .6 million sales, which is 3% lower compared to last year and losses at 1.86 million compared to 2.42 million during the last year. As communicated earlier, we expect the losses in FI24 will be around 2.5 million. We expect Avukuko to break even by FI25. We maintain the same outlook. In America, we had a good growth, uh, I think close to a double digit growth that we have. Standalone abrasives, on YTD basis, <clears throat> We have grown 3.8% to 858 crores compared to last year. Industrial and precision segment had a good growth. Retail segment is below last year. As communicated earlier, retail segment is impacted due to dumping from China and competition from new entrants. We are working on addressing these challenges and expect recovery in four to six quarters. On YTD basis, the margin has improved significantly to 16.4% compared to 12.9% during the last year, mainly on account of product mix, softening in input costs, improvement in operational efficiencies, and better realization. Consolidated abrasives PBAT on YTD basis was at uh, 118 crores compared to 67 crores resulting in margin improvement from 4.4% to 7.6%. This was mainly due to better performance in standalone, which we just covered, Rodius and Avuko, we also looked at it slightly earlier. Q3 FI24 PVAT was 50 crores against 21 crores in Q3 of the last year, and 37 crores in the Q2 of the last year. The increase predominantly coming from standalone margin moving from 12.9% to 16.4% and lower losses at Rodius and Avuko. I'll now move on to electro minerals. Electro minerals on a consolidated basis for nine months, FI24 had a sales of 1,164 crores compared to rupees 1,228 crores during the last year. Electro Minerals consolidated revenue for the quarter was rupees 369 crores versus 377 crores in Q2 of the current year, resulting in a decrease of 2.4% and it degrew 10.6% quarter over quarter. Now I'll move to the standalone Electro Minerals. For nine months of FI 24, we had 562 crores and it did grew, sorry, grew by 7.2% compared to last year. The revenue for the year, for the quarter was 172 crores versus 173 crores in Q3 of the last year and it grew 10.6% sequentially. On YTD basis, the volume growth in Aluminas was very high teens and SIC uh, double digit has been good, but price realization was hit largely by due to the dumping by Chinese product. Price realization was hit almost by 9%. Hence, we could not get the benefit of increased volume in sales. Our focus will continue to secure volumes. We expect the short-term price pressure to continue. VAW, now I will cover the performance of VAW sales for Q3 FI24. <clears throat> In local currency, it grew by 26% to rubble 2.47 billion compared to Q3 FI23, 
and B grew by 2% compared to Q2 of the current financial year. On YTD basis, sales grew by 25% to ruble 7.4 billion, 19% due to mix exchange and price realization, and 6% because of the volume. The operations are running well and there has been an increase in sales volumes compared to last year. Uh, when converted to INR, the, the story looks different and shows downward performance because of the stronger ruble during the last year where it was 1 ruble equivalent to 1.27 uh, uh, on an average for the first 9 months whereas it has become much weaker at 0.92 this year. They delivered a profit of uh, 392 million ruble in Q3 FI24 against ruble 411 million during the same period last year. On OITD basis, profit includes to ruble 1.2 billion compared to 890 million during the last year. Capacity utilization is very good. They are able to sell more in Russia. The mix is now moving to 58% domestic. Uh, which used to be 45% pre-Russia-Ukraine conflict. Fosker Zirconia, on YTD basis, Fosker had lower sales of 23% compared to last year. Uh, this is a volume reduction. This is mainly on account of postponement of offtake by three top customers and price pressure from Chinese supplies. Sales in Q3 FI24 had improved compared to Q2. We expect Q4 to be better. We expect Q4 to be normal, and uh, they are working towards improving the sales volume and expect a normal business in FI25. We are confident of achieving this uh, one. Orders, backlog that we hold as of now for Q4 tells us that it will be a normal Q4. Overall electron electro minerals on YTD basis PBIT was 186 crores compared to 210 crores compared to last year. This is a degrowth of 11.7%. This is due to the impact of 25 crores in standalone and 17 crores in phosphor zirconia. We will cover this more in detail later. For the quarter, PBIT at consolidated level was 50 crores against be 62 crores in Q2 of the current year and 82 crores in Q3 of the last financial year. I'll move to ceramics. Consolidated ceramics on OETD basis for FI24 grew by 4.4 percent to 795 crores. In Q3 FI24, sales of ceramics was rupees 243 crores against rupees 264 crores in Q3 FI23 and rupees 265 crores in Q3 FI24. Standalone ceramics and OTD basis, it grew by 6% 6 to 661 crores compared to 623 crores during the last year. The refractory, wire ceramics and metallized cylinder business grew around 22% on OTD basis. But with the degrowth of engineered ceramics business, the overall ceramic business segment resulted in a 6% growth. In Q3 FI24, sales of ceramic was at 213 crores against 219 crores in Q3 FI23 and 217 crores in Q2 FI24. Subsidiaries in Australia and America registered a very good growth. Profit before finance costs and tax at consolidated level on OTD basis was rupees 215 crores, growing at 13.6% compared to last year. Q3 FI24 PBAT was 60 crores, a degrowth of 9.4% compared to Q3 FI24, and a degrowth of 18.5% compared to Q3 FI24 at consolidated level. The PBAT margin has improved from 24.8% to 27% on OTD basis. All companies in this segment contributed to margin improvement. Now I request Mr. Padmanabhan to cover PBAT margin, debt position, capex, cash flow, and return on capital employed. Thank you.
in respect of the PBAT margin at consolidated level on YCD basis, it is at 13.2% uh, in the current year compared to 11.2% during last year. This is mainly due to the better performance in abrasives and ceramics. PVAT margin for Q3 FI24 was at 14% compared to 12.6% in Q3 of FI23 and 12.6% in Q2 of current year. Standalone on YTT basis, standalone PBAT margin is at 17.7% in the current year compared to 16.3% during last year. This is majorly driven by abrasives from 12.9% to 16.4%. Then ceramics from 24.6% to 25.6%. But there is a drop in electrometal segment from 16.1% to 10.5%. PVAT margin for the quarter improved from 16.2% in Q3 of last year to 17.4% in the current year and improved by 17 bits uh, sequentially. I will move on to the segments. In respect of uh, the abrasive segments, on YTT basis, consolidated PVAT margins improved from 4.4% to 7.6%, mainly contributed by standalone abrasive business. Margins increasing from 12.9% to 16.4% and losses coming down in the German entities Rodius and Abuco. At consolidated level, PBAT margins for the quarter improved from 4% in Q3 of last year to 9.5% in Q3 of the current year. Also improved by 221 basis points sequentially. This was due to the increase in margins of standalone business from 14.2% in Q3 of last year to 17.2% in Q3 of the current year. This is on back of the better realizations and improved operational efficiencies. Standalone's abrasive margins improved by 50 basis points sequentially as well. In respect of electro minerals, on YTD basis, at consolidated level, PBAT margins has decreased from 17.1% during last year to 16% in the current financial year. This drop is a result of standalone business and the South African subsidiary's performance. The margins of standalone business dropped from 16.1% to 10.5%. On year-to-date basis, volume growth in aluminas and silicon carbide has been good. However, price realizations were lower due to dumping by the Chinese producers. This has resulted in drop in PBIT to the extent of around 25 crores. PBAT margins at consolidated level for Q3 of current year was at 13.7%, dropping from PBAT margin of 20% in Q3 of last year. Sequentially, it dropped by 264 basis points. The margins of standalone business dropped from 15.5% in Q3 of last year to 7.8% in Q3 of the current year and 410 basis points sequentially. The drop in margins is mainly due to the lower price realization despite securing higher volumes. In respect of the ceramic segments, on YTD basis, consolidated PBAT margins improved from 24.8% to 27%. This is mainly contributed by standalone ceramics business margins increasing from 24.6 to 25.6. American subsidy did significantly well compared to last year. At consolidated level, PBAT margins for the quarter dropped from 25.1% in Q3 of last year to 24.7% in Q3 of the current year and dropped by 314 basis points sequentially. The margins of the standalone business dropped from 25.1% in Q3 of last year to 23.7% of, uh, in the current Q3 and by 259 basis points sequentially. This is mainly on account of the mix between the industrial ceramics and refractories and product mix within the industrial ceramics. On the debt position, uh, the standalone has, uh, has no debt and uh, it is a debt-free company now. And at the total debt at consolidated basis was at 119 crores compared to 140 crores as of uh, September 2023. The debt equity ratio was at uh, 0.04 at consolidated level. Cash and cash equivalent net of borrowing was at 342 crores. On the CAPEX, CAPEX spent so far at consolidated level is 154 crores. At a full year, the investment in CAPEX program was uh, 300 crores at the consolidated level as communicated earlier. We expect for the full year, 
uh, we will be incurring around a capex of around 240 to 260 crores. In respect of uh, cash flow or free cash flow on year-to-date basis during the current year at consolidated level is at 75 percentage of PAT compared to a negative 33 percentage of PAT during last year. At standalone level, it is at 80 percentage of the PAT compared to 10 percentage of the PAT during last year. This uh, improvement is mainly on account of the significantly higher net cash inflow from operations and better working capital management compared to last year. In respect of the return on capital employed, on a YTD basis at a consolidated level, it is at 18.3% compared to 15.8% during last year. At standalone level, it is at 20.5% compared to 18.3% in last year. On a year year-on-year basis, for consolidated businesses, return on capital employed for ceramics has improved from 38.3 to 46.5 percent. For electro metals, it has decreased from 29.9 to 27.1, and for abrasive, it has improved from 6.6 to 11.4 percent. For standalone businesses, the return on capital employed for ceramics has improved from 42.5 percent to 51.4 percent. For abrasive, it has improved from 36.4 to 42.9. But for electro minerals, it has decreased from 38.2% to 27%. And in respect of uh, the unallocable expenses, uh, uh, basically it is uh, the difference between the income and the net at the, at the other corporate level, uh, which, which is not included in the respective segments. Uh, the unallocable expense at the YTT level, uh, there is a difference of around, there is a reduction of 18.5 crores. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, there is a reduction of 19.5 crores, and sequentially it was lowered by 27.38 crores. The broad reasons are withholding related to the, the dividends from our Russian subsidy accounted in the current year, in the FI23, but not in the current year. That is why the difference is coming. And the second reason is uh, higher exchange gain in the current year and lower project related employee costs and the completion of uh, the consultancy engagement in the last year itself. There is no expenditure, similar expenditure in the current year. In respect of the standalone also, there is uh, the unallocable expenses, there is a reduction on OTD basis. The expense is lower by 17.91 crores. Similarly, quarter on quarter, the expense are lower by 15.5 crores and sequentially the expenses are lower by 13.36 crores. In all the three cases, the broad reason are higher dividend income in the current period, lower project employee costs, and completion of the professional engagement in the last year. And uh, um, these are all the reasons why the reduction. I would now request Mr. Sridharan to summarize. Thank you. I would like to end the opening remark with a small summary. In standalone business, Volume and price growth is good in refractories, ceramics, industrial and precision abrasives. There's a good volume growth in core products in electro mineral business, but price realization was impacted due to China dumping. Reasonable volume growth and strong price realization in Russia. South Africa was impacted by low order intake and partially by China dumping. We are confident in Q4 they would get back to normal sales. Rhodius would break even excluding PPA. Losses in Avoco are lowering. Kumi America and Australia are doing well. Free cash flow to PAT is good and the company is debt free. PBAT margin of abrasive India has gone has grown from 12.9 percent of the last year, and we expect this could go up by 350 to 400 basis points. PBAT margin of consolidated appraisal will go up. Our expectation is 200 to 220 basis point. PBAT margin of ceramics in India was at 24.6 percent, and it could stand, be at the same level as the last year. PBAT margin of consolidated ceramics. From 24.4% of last year, there could be a pickup of 150 to 180 basis point. 
PBAT margin of EMD will go down from 14%. We expect at least in the range of 350-400 basis point, it will be lower. Overall, PBAT margin last year was 11.8%, could go up by 100 to 120 basis point. We feel standalone growth could be in the range of 5 to 6%, as against what we communicated last time at 10 to 12%. And consolidated sales could be flattish or marginal growth against 5% what was earlier shared. This is largely an impact of the exchange uh, impact coming from ruble. In summary, major parts of the business volume and price growth is there. Margins are improving, good cash flows, recovery in FASCAR is in place, work needs to happen in abrasive domestic business. Rudius and Auco is on track. With this, I will complete the opening remarks and will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital Advices. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir, and thank you for the detailed uh, opening remarks. Uh, so my first question is on uh, ceramics. If I see, um, you know, this quarter on both standalone and also on consolidated basis, there has been a decline in the revenue. I remember the previous quarter you had highlighted there was some inventory correction which was happening by the uh, client. So just wanted to understand what is the status of that right now and, you know, how should we look at the ceramics business uh, going forward given that we are doing a lot of initiatives to grow uh, uh, the same. And also, if you can talk about how metallized cylinders and some of the other wear uh, and industrial ceramics are also performing out here. That's my first question. Thank you, Bhumika. I think uh, it's a good uh, question and concern. And I think, uh, as we said earlier, it was a, a one customer inventory correction that they were going through, which I think uh, is what currently uh, we are facing. That's why in my opening remark also we said, you know, there is a growth which is uh, substantially high at about 22% in all other business segment of the ceramics and a degrowth in engineered ceramics, which caused the overall growth of 6%. We believe that uh, once this correction, which I think would get addressed, uh, you know, uh, by this year, we will get back to an overall growth of 20 percentage as normal that uh, we used to have in the past. Okay, sir. So can we quantify what has been the decline in the, uh, in, uh, you know, in the, in the engineer ceramics and uh, uh, in some manner so that we get a sense of what has been the 22% kind of a growth? What is the base number that it can possibly decline to? It, no, no. It's 22% is the growth in rest of the ceramic business. Yes, sir. Factories, okay. metallized cylinders, uh, you know, engineer, uh, bar ceramics, those are the businesses which are growing at 22%, while this is having a degrowth. We expect this correction to get completed, and in the next year, we will have overall growth of about 20 percentage. Okay. So, sir, I mean, uh, the question is that, you know, from a year into the fourth quarter, will there be a further uh, decline in the ceramics revenues, you think, or is this quarter you think that this is the bottom and should not decline further from you? I, I don't think uh, we, we expect... Uh, Further decline, I think we are already uh, uh, have seen all the corrections, etc. So it should be fine. And I don't think uh, we would get back to any further challenges coming in. Understood. Understood. So the other question is on the 
EMD segment, you said and spoke about the Chinese competition and the dumping, which is impacting pricing both in India and also in um, Africa. Um, you know, that's been a fairly weak, uh, you know, couple of quarters out there because of this aspect. Um, are we seeing, you know, further reduction in prices out here? Or if you can just give some trend on how the SIC prices are trending. And how are we trying to contain this so that our profitability doesn't decline um, on an overall basis? Yeah, so I think uh, um, we have, first of all, good volume growth, you know, both in aluminars as well as in silicon carbide. Our aim is to definitely secure volumes and we don't want to lose, uh, you know, any opportunity. That is, we are very clear. Uh, but the un, unusual price dumping is what is causing the current problem, and that is how the the margins uh, of the P, you know electro mineral is uh, going down. But I expect that uh, you know as a business they have uh, probably bottomed out. But I am not saying that you know Chinese are going to stop further dumping. We expect this trend to continue. Maybe for the next, uh, you know, four to six quarters, we need to wait and watch. Hmm. See, largely, you know, this is not a uh, situation that we are seeing only in India. We are seeing this across the globe, and uh, I'm sure you guys uh, notice this across industries as well. It is just not in our industry. So. Um, that's why I said that the price pressure will continue. We feel that we have bottomed out. There could be some minor change, but I don't think uh, it will go any further down. And I think, uh, uh, so, you know, last year uh, we ended at 14% PBAT margin. And this year we could end in the range of about 10%. And uh, <clears throat> that, uh, with the, let's say, if you look at the, uh, the Q3, we were lower because there are some mixed play also is there, but I think 10 to 12 percent is something we should expect. Okay, okay. And on the uh, war side, uh, because uh, obviously there's been also a further impact on the consolidated basis because of the ruble translation. Uh, so how should we look on in terms of war revenues growing? I mean, they have obviously done very well, as you mentioned, almost 26% kind of growth for the current quarter uh, in ruble terms. Uh, so uh, how should we look on consolidated basis for war to continue doing well? And uh, any update on both in war and in India on the speciality bit, which can offset some bit of this impact of the Chinese uh, uh, dumping? So, as far as VAW is concerned, the, the company is doing fine, and I think uh, they are having both <clears throat> volume and uh, price growth. I expect, see, the conversion rate of last year was abnormal. Conversion rate of this year is not abnormal. This year, it is in the range of point kind of nine nine two in that range. Normally, if you have observed the last five years, we will be in the range of 0.9 to 1. This is the normal trend as far as conversion of uh, ruble to INR is concerned. Last year, you must have noticed that when the oil prices were going up, Russian ruble uh, had the benefit and then they, they had really kind of shot up. That is why it went up to as high as about 1.27 or even as high as 1.3. So hence, uh, we had the benefit of higher conversion in last year, which is not forthcoming this year. Yes, sir. That, so, that part of the translation bit I understand. I was asking more in terms of Google terms, if this performance that we've seen um, is sustainable or not. Yes. Uh, so, Right. I think ruble ruble terms at 10% to 12% growth is sustainable. What they have grown 23% uh, uh, now, 
there is certain element of these type of benefits getting uh, you know passed on but i think uh, a 10 to 12% growth should be expected right so sir, on a consolidated basis one should because of this whole transition impact plus the uh, china dumping that is happening in the other markets yeah. one should kind of build in a kind of a uh, you know even for fy 25 because you know the pain might continue for some time would it be fair to say that we should look at a single digit kind of a growth and you know 12 what percent 10 12 percent margin profile on a consolidated basis are you talking margin profile or a growth profile? So, uh, you know, for FI25, if one were to build in like a single digit growth on consolidated revenues yeah. and a uh, uh, margin profile of 12 odd percent, would that be fair or you think there is some upside out there? Look, I think uh, we this year, my guess is that uh, we could end. Uh, around 12 and a half plus, you know, 12 and a half to 12.8 percent type of a, a growth that we could end, you know. And uh, at the same time, we also had losses this year from FOSCA and uh, we also had some challenges forthcoming um, because of, uh, uh, you know, issues in how co you know progressing in terms of the recovery etc and the losses in Nauco and Rolies to further come down so if I look at it I feel that these are losses that would go away and probably we will be in a better weekend those are the additional upsides that one needs to consider as far as the growth is concerned I will probably come and share with you more when we meet in April or May Sure. So I'll come back in the question queue for a bit because I have more questions there. Uh, I'll come back in the question queue, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Vitlani from SBI Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, Sridhar and uh, the team. Uh, good performance, uh, especially on the bottom line front. Uh, so I have a few, I have few questions. Um, is when we acquired the German uh, companies, um, at that time uh, we had outlined uh, uh, a path to double-digit EBIT margins. Uh, so the question here is the same I had asked previously: Is do you believe that uh, those level of margins? Uh, are achievable, uh, are the timelines that we anticipated uh, are same changing while we are moving in the same direction and qualitatively if you could talk about um, uh, what makes you believe that uh, from a loss to a break even we could get to a double digit margin level, that's the first question. Second is uh, uh, if I look at the standalone abrasives as a segment is then after the first quarter of 23, uh, fiscal year 23, um, prior to that we were clocking high teens growth rate. The, the underlying growth rate has nosedived to uh, low single digit uh, sub 5%. And uh, you alluded to some competitive pressures, especially in the thin wheels uh, segment, um, while we have seen the margins going up. Uh, so if you could talk qualitatively uh, on the uh, standalone abrasive segment, it seems that the margin expansion is driven by the mix change uh, towards a higher share of bonded, which is a better margin segment. And um, uh, how do you see this growth rates coming back? The efforts that the company has been uh, taking underway last time you mentioned that um, there is a lot of effort being taken to kind of uh, take the growth rate up to double digit of mid teens. So if you could kind of talk about this. Last bit is you, uh, in the previous uh, participants question, you did on, uh, kind of alluded, uh, but if you could talk about the uh, the uh, green energy segment, the hydrogen, um, where in the previous instances we have mentioned that 
as the customer moves to version 1 to version 2 uh, there could be an intermittent uh, stuff but there is a significant increase in the content for cumi consequently there could be a geometric growth from an arithmetic growth so if you could talk more about it qualitatively and that you said that next year the growth rate for the segment as a whole can jump to 20% and how does that lead to profitability these are my three questions thank you bhavan ji i think uh, <clears throat> first let me take the rodias question so we said that uh, we would take 5 uh, years to get back to uh, you know the double digit uh, pbit margin and uh, <clears throat> we feel confident of that trajectory um so what is happening in the current uh, context is that uh, one uh, europe is going through uh, you know demand uh, challenges which i think you all know and you you are all seeing in across many industries plus germany especially went through a huge cost pressure particularly coming from the energy and similarly on the other raw materials which are all now slowly coming to you know get back to normal except energy cost which is still on the higher side so but for these two uh, um blips that they have to face i think once these things get addressed we still confident that you know we'll get back to uh, that trajectory that we were, we were sharing Uh, at the time of acquisition in fact uh, the the integration and the work that we are all to doing is really good because there are a lot of projects that we are working closely in terms of electro mineral supplies to rodias has significantly increased similarly the we are able to work closely on various technology product projects that we could work together on the thin wheel area which i think probably we will share more uh in the next uh, say 18 months 24 months as we start <clears throat> making use of it to your second question which is largely on the uh the ceramic uh, uh side and abrasives let me go to abrasives stand alone abrasives stand alone i think um, so we look at the abrasives stand alone in three broad segments abrasives that goes to the industrial application and precision abrasives and abrasives that goes to the retail segment the first two segments are growing well and uh, we think that that growth rate should really pick up and we should be able to put our acts together well as far as retail the challenge is we are below last year and that is what is pulling us down and we have putting uh, you know a set of various action in terms of retail initiatives and that is why i said that we will take about 4 to 6 quarters to put our acts together to get back to the normal growth rate of abrasives that we used to have um so i won't call that just as a demand challenges or competition challenges or etc i think majorly is an internal challenge that we need to start addressing definitely there is a challenge of chinese uh, dumping and the price pressure that we are facing so that is definitely not there but besides that we we'll clearly face the challenge of uh, our own internal challenges which i think we will work and put together in the next four to six quarters as far as the um ceramics goes you were talking about hydrogen uh, based ceramics i think uh, perhaps you are talking about uh, ceramics that goes into hydrogen economy perhaps that's what i, what I am inferring from your comment is uh, 
yeah so we we are working with certain customers who are uh, in the field of uh, solid oxide fuel cell manufacturers they use the similar technology for the hydrogen and they are using our product testing bringing the their own products etc so we will get to that i'm not sure about your comment of geometrical progression i if there is some impression like this i would probably uh, ask you to <clears throat> take that away and uh, we will get back to you once we have uh, clarity in terms of how the product gets established and then <clears throat> we will uh, but definitely our products is uh, getting used tested by them we will uh, share more as we establish our product just to follow up on the last bit uh, um is in our previous discussion we understand a content I mean, like in auto we say content for vehicle is the content per sofc for cover end up going up for that product and that itself can lead to the significant growth for the segment as a whole as you are guiding 20% growth for the segment is is in itself a substantial growth yeah i mean we we used to be more than 20% growth it's just one uh, one customer correction is where this challenge has happened but i think the ones that is addressed but we are also putting together a, a program where how do we address such a thing not to affect it, uh, us in future there are 10 different initiatives you are working on to counter that so considering all that i am saying that we will get back to the 20% growth trajectory Great, sir. Thank you so much for taking my questions. Thank you, Mr. Bhavan. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshit Patel from Equira Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. So my first question is on our uh, ceramic segment. So could you uh, give a flavor on the exports that we do from this particular segment? So, what would be the share of exports within, let's say, refractories? And similarly, would we, what would be the share of exports within the wear ceramics, technical ceramics that we do? And over the past few years, have you seen any change in this mix between domestic to exports? Because I reckon, since a lot of newer industries which are growing in India, let's say the renewable energy. Uh, a lot of new wind capacity is coming on board where we uh, supply those nacelle covers we do quite a lot of business into metallized cylinders as well which go into the high voltage equipment so since this kind of industries are growing is there a case for domestic revenues to grow faster than the exports or we will continue to grow faster on exports because we are acquiring new customers over there so if you can give some idea about the exports within this segment that would be very helpful yeah so thank you mr sita i think so as far as the <clears throat> uh, mix change that you are asking definitely uh, as within the uh, overall ceramics industrial ceramics is highly export oriented i would say 80 plus percentage is exports and that continues to be in that uh, zone i don't think any major change is happening as far as refractory is probably 20 to 25% but that is where the mix is changing you know there is more exports happening and uh, orders uh, on industries where we have established uh, you know in india people are looking at using similar applications elsewhere that is how the growth also is happening on the refractory side uh, so i think your observation of uh, the demand for such products outside this is a correct observation and it is increasing more towards export understood sure so my uh, second question is on baw so since you have mentioned the pricing is under pressure especially in india with respect to the fused alumina business have we seen the similar kind of pressure in the silicon carbide business as well at vaw or because we are the largest producer of sic over there and one of the lowest cost producers we are still insulated from those kind of pressures 
and given that you have mentioned that we could grow our revenue stand to 12% in the rural terms over there but anam do we have sufficient capacity to grow or we have already put in motion the expansion plans over there yeah i think uh, as far as vaw is concerned uh, it's just not the price alone i think the ability for them to work with the customer and application basis uh, product allows them to be really competitive both in terms of the lowest cost manufacturer as well as highly technically capable manufacturer so these two factors allow them to compete uh, you know in the market so well and that is also the reason where we feel that this trend could continue so uh, in terms of any uh, capex plans over there apart from the usual de bottlenecking that we do yeah i think we 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 have uh, the normal capex plan uh, plus i think the last uh, couple of years we have added a uh, few capacities more in the <clears throat> silicon carbide fusion capacity which we shared earlier is good enough to cover <clears throat> and uh, address the growth rate that we are looking at understood sir just last one bookkeeping question uh, could you uh, quantify uh, what was the sales and profits for fosco zirconia for the 9 month fy24 uh, that would be my last question um it's about uh, 115 crores of sales and a 10 crores of loss understood sir uh, thank you very much for answering my question thank you thank you the next question is from the line of amit anwani from pl capital please go ahead hi uh, so thanks for taking my question uh, my first question is on the uh, the german subsidiaries uh, in the past uh, we did talked about uh, you know the energy cost uh, contracts uh, on the energy side uh, will be terminating and uh, uh that can also <clears throat> lead to significant improvement in uh, these subsidiaries so any update on that and second thing despite uh, the volume growth of uh, volume decline of 8% Can you please repeat your question sir we are, you are not that audible and are audible now yeah better yeah yeah so uh, my first question on on the subsidiary uh, german subsidiary just wanted to understand uh, uh, in previous quarters you did talked about the energy contract uh, getting terminated uh, uh, the high cost energy contracts and it will be getting into the new contracts so any update on that and second thing despite uh, you know volume growth of this quarter uh, in uh, uh, the subsidiaries what exactly led to the performance improvement this quarter so i think uh, thanks for your sharp remembering of uh, this uh, earlier comment and um, yes the contracts as we uh, end we get to the normal contract and the normal one prices are uh, at lower price which is also is, is giving us the benefit uh, why the better performance is i think uh, uh, see we pick the cost increase and it is start softening and you might have noticed that the prices are coming down in terms of the commodities as well as the energy cost is uh, coming down and these two helped us to bring this uh, benefit in terms of lower losses and uh, they have also improved the mix particularly in terms of the private label Uh, customers that they could get more and that is where it's helping them uh, plus the subsidiaries in australia and america is doing very well and uh, because of the higher order intake in the in these two geographies so it's a combination of all these factors helping them doing better so my second question on on um, you know lot many companies announcing the semiconductor manufacturing including lnt also did announce the fabless semiconductor facility which they will be putting up so any sense on 
your business outlook or product basket, you know, improving? Will this be incremental uh, growth market which is going to come? Any assessment on this front uh, for CUNY? So I think the announcements so far we have seen are all on the silicon based fab. So, so far we haven't seen any uh, silicon carbide based fab. So we'll wait uh, if there are better opportunities for us. Sure, so my last question on, on the Red Sea crisis, since you explained that uh, the ceramics business is more than 80% exports, and uh, uh, overall, we have subsidiaries and we are supplying raw materials to the German subsidiaries as well. So, any impact of Red Sea crisis which you are sensing uh, in medium to long term? Yeah, so I think uh, one uh, in the last quarter, you know, there are some delays in shipment we are uh, looking at largely because of the container availability, you know, those type of challenges. The other challenge is the, you know, freight costs going up, shipping time going up. So it's the customers who are trying to get adjusted to this, you know, uh, how they would like to look at it. A lot, lot of them are looking at how can they ship using Asia to get into U.S., uh, and avoiding, uh, you know, uh, you know this route at all. But uh, all this takes customer by customer, as well as uh, you know their own uh, challenges in terms of uh, urgency versus cost. You know, how do they balance, etc. But it is uh, it is a concern, and uh, we are working customer by customer. Sure. So last question, if I can squeeze in, uh, about the 22% growth which you mentioned in ceramics uh, for the, uh, you know, non-industrial, uh, non-technical ceramics. Wanted to understand the technical ceramics contribution this quarter, uh, uh, if you can uh, highlight. You don't share individually the these details. Sure. So thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. So thanks for taking my question. Most of my questions have been answered. Uh, uh, one is on uh, one once more on the Chinese dumping uh, mm -hmm. that we are seeing. So I mean, uh, if we recall some six seven years ago. Uh, China had shut down many of the facilities which were there in the northern Mongolia belt and uh, that had led to uh, better realization uh, across the world for electro minerals. Uh, now this dumping is because are they opening up those facilities or is it like uh, what is happening over there, what is resulting in this dumping as, uh, uh, over the past few quarters? I think... Uh, <clears throat> Those days, the Mongolia is largely a silicon carbide uh, shutting down, you know, the, uh, is a story on that. Um, right now, we see, face this primarily in the aluminas. And, uh, yeah, there is a pressure on the silicon carbide as well, but not to the extent of what we are facing it in the aluminas. So, I am not an expert on Chinese economy and uh, difficult for me to comment, but I think what I see is uh, um, there is definitely a pressure what we see from the Chinese economy. They want to um, sustain at whatever the cost and hence uh, they want to uh, price it, which I don't know how they are getting compensated, etc., which is a very uh, difficult thing for us to understand. But this is this is the reality. Understood. And alumina would be what percentage of the electro mineral? Sorry. Alumina would be what percentage of the electro mineral business overall? It's a, it's a significant percentage. Really. Understood, sir. 
and uh, the second question is with respect to you commenting that we can grow the uh, second segment uh, that is the refractories and ceramics business by 20% Uh, is it going to come from overall market growth and we have products over there and that driving or is it like uh, new product introduction uh, our efforts into getting into new markets can you explain some more uh, on how that 20% would be achieved is it just pure category growth that is going to help us or is it a bit of market share gains new products and all these things the market itself is growing and look at the history of us for the last 4 5 years we have been doing this so it's a market uh, and a combination of uh, products we have, what we have done and the third factor is that higher export as one of the participant was also asking refractories uh, you know we are able to get into newer geographies which we were never there so these factors uh, are giving us this uh you know feeling that we could do 20% and 20% growth is more of volume growth that we are talking about uh, the combination of volume and price god is fair yeah thank you thank you thank you that was the last question for today i would now like to hand over to the management for closing comments over to you sir so thank you for uh, all of your time i hope uh, we could answer all your questions we tried our best in terms of putting up a decent opening remark with uh, all your concerns that you may have but i think i just like to summarize is that i feel that major parts of the business volume and price growth is there margins are improving good cash flows and the return on capital employed is improving recovery in fosker is in place and brodius and auco is are on track uh, we need to put our acts together on domestic abrasives these are some broad sense of uh, a summary that i could share thank you on behalf of icici securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines